Diagnosing Bowen's disease can be difficult. So difficult, in fact, that one study showed 50% of the time doctors get it wrong. Are you one of those making this diagnostic mistake and risking your patients coming back time and time again because your treatments fail? Learning four simple steps will make all the difference to you and your patients. Who is Bowen anyway? Why do we use doctors' names for medical conditions? We've got McBurney's point to help identify the appendix location, Jupiterin's contracture of the hand, which, after 30 years of medical practice, I still need to look at each time to spell it correctly. And spare a thought for Dr. Alzheimer. Imagine the scene. Hello, I'm Dr. Alzheimer. Sorry, what was your name again? I guess we should be thankful. His name wasn't something else. Fortunately, the name Bowens is short and easy to remember compared to its proper medical name. In situ squamous cell cancer or intraepidermal carcinoma. What does it look like on your patient's skin? Let's have a bit of fun with a quick quiz on four of my patients. Pick from this list the diagnosis you think is the most likely for each of these patients. Pen and paper ready? You can press the pause button if you want more time. And here's the answers. They all have confirmed Bowens disease. Sorry about that. So step one to mastering Bowens disease is quite simple. Just consider it. When you're trying to make a diagnosis of any chronic, non-healing, non-itchy, pink red patch, in particular, if it's got scale and has a clear well demarcated border, think, could this be Bowen? In Bowen's disease, the abnormal skin cells involve the full thickness of the epidermis. Most importantly, these abnormal cells don't breach the basement membrane. Otherwise, it will have transformed from an in situ squamous cell cancer, or Bowen's, to an invasive squamous cell cancer. It's on the spectrum of skin damage caused by a lifetime accumulation of sun ultraviolet radiation damage. Because of their inbuilt sun protection, people with a skin of colour rarely develop Bowens. And in patients below the age of 30, it's as rare as hen's teeth at a vegan buffet. Found most often in the over 60s, Bowens can appear almost anywhere on the skin, but most commonly on ultraviolet light exposed areas like the head, neck, fingers and hands. But one UK survey reported the majority were on the lower legs. And that's my experience with Bowens in my patients. The vast majority are single, solitary lesions, but several patches can occur at once, especially in patients with immunosuppression, for instance, after a kidney transplant. This is your second step to mastery of Bowens. Know who is at high risk and where on the body are most likely to find it. What about the dermoscopy of Bowens? Well, you tell me. Here's the dermoscopic photos of my patients from that earlier mini quiz. What do you notice? How many of them have scales? What about the background colour? What about those odd vessel shapes? These are called different names, but you'll often hear them called glomerular. And don't try saying that fast after eating a whole pizza unless you want to see it again. This name is used because they look a little bit like the glomerular apparatus in the kidney. But these vessels in bones have nothing to do with the kidney. When starting out in dermoscopy, I often confuse the term glomerular with globular. Am I the only one? A globule is a discrete area larger than a dot, and pigmented globules are very commonly seen in nevi. If glomerular is too much of a tongue twister for you, then do what I do. Use the terms coiled vessels or knotted vessels. Why do they look like this? Here's a cross section of skin with the dermal papillae pushing up into the epidermis. When we look down at the skin using a dermoscope, this is what we see. Here's a few other vessel shapes that you will commonly see in dermoscopy and other conditions. What do you think of this particular dermoscopic picture? On dermoscopy, it would do quite nicely for Bowen's disease, right? Pink background, coiled vessels evenly spaced throughout. However, if you look at the wider picture, we find it's actually a rash. There are two common pitfalls to avoid. One, psoriasis. Always ask about a history of psoriasis and check the typical sites for other lesions. Secondly, varicose eczema can look similar, and that's also found on the legs, a common place for Bowens. It usually itches and should respond to topical steroids and emollients. What if you still aren't sure? then sometimes histology is needed with something like a punch biopsy. Therefore, step three to mastering Bowen's is learning to confirm the diagnosis using dermoscopy, maybe therapeutic trials, and failing that, sometimes a punch biopsy. Note that most consultant dermatologists in secondary care will treat a clinical dermoscopic classic Bowen's without requiring histology. Remember this fact. A patch of Bowen's has a roughly 5% or 1 in 20 chance of turning into an invasive squamous cell cancer in the patient's lifetime. That means it has a 95% chance that it won't do that in their lifetime. So do you have to treat Bowen's disease when you suspect it? Well, on statistics like that, no. 
Bear in mind, Bowen's is usually asymptomatic and the principle of first do no harm is a good starting point. In my very frail and elderly patients, a small patch of Bowen's is usually the least of their worries. Reassurance and monitoring for new changes is a very reasonable option. What if the patient would like treatment? I'm going to share with you my own simple treatment decision-making process. It's based on the 2022 British Association of Dermatologists guidelines, which you can download using a link in the video description below. When a patient presents with a skin lesion, the first step is thinking, could this be Bowen's? A clinical assessment will help you decide if this patient is at risk of Bowen's and a dermoscopy can help you try and confirm the diagnosis. What if you're uncertain? I consider then if it could be psoriasis or eczema and discuss a therapy trial using a potent steroid cream with my patient. If you do this, ensure you take personal responsibility for the follow-up of that patient, perhaps three to four weeks later. If the response to the steroid cream is very poor, it's probably not eczema or psoriasis. Worrying features to concern you are a rapid growth, ulceration, bleeding, a thickened base and pain. These are much more common in something like a squamous cell cancer. Look at this 12 millimeter scaly patch on this 77 year old lady's neck. It's been growing slowly for three to four months and it was sore. The scale kept dropping off and reforming. It sits on a red inflamed looking base. It could be a wart, it could be a seborrheic keratosis, but you cannot rule out a squamous cell cancer. So I referred her on the cancer care pathway. On excision, it showed that this was actually Bowen's. Or take this this 89 year old lady who had a previous invasive squamous cell cancer removed from her forehead. This red raised bleeding eight millimeter patch had been growing for only three weeks. Demoscopy showed some very large coiled vessels with some hemorrhage. You can occasionally get coiled vessels in an invasive squamous cell cancer. And I referred her on the cancer care pathway and the histology was hyperkeratotic Bowen's. Bowen's are disordered keratinocytes and the amount of scale can vary. If you're uncertain, Sometimes a punch biopsy can make all the difference to the diagnosis. Otherwise, the first rule of primary care demoscopy is, if in doubt, refer it out. And just make sure you learn from that process. What if you're pretty certain that this is a typical patch of Bowen's? Well, discuss the treatment options with your patients. Firstly, conservative management. This would involve moisturizers, giving the patient the leaflet and educating them about the condition and teaching them to monitor the patch, reporting any new changes to you. If you opt for active treatment, then the guidelines say, insight to you. Squamous cell cancer that is small and at low risk may be managed in primary care by a general practitioner who is capable of establishing a clinical diagnosis and initiating treatment options as per the guidelines. For me, there are two options I think all GPs can learn to use safely. If you're new to treating Bowen's disease, start with these. Firstly, cryotherapy. These are ideal for small patches of Bowen's and a 30 second freeze with a three millimeter margin around included as well, gives you a good 95% cure rate. Secondly, 5-fluorouracil cream. I tend to prescribe it twice a day for four weeks. Make sure you counsel your patients well about how to use it. The inflammation is very marked. Ensure you follow up your patients closely. Bear in mind, there are high risk areas that I would probably avoid treating myself. That's on the face and especially around the eyes and where there are large patches on the lower leg due to poor healing concerns. These I might refer on to secondary care. My fourth step to mastery of Bowen's is managing patients well in primary care with the tools that we have available. Who was Bowen? He was a professor of dermatology at Harvard Medical School. In 1912, he wrote up two case reports giving them the descriptive title Chronic Atypical Epithelial Proliferation. Bit of a mouthful that is, isn't it? A friend probably suggested to him down the pub after a few dicks, why don't we attach your name to it? So we did. And we've been suffering the consequences of that one round of drinks ever since. If you haven't already, you need to watch these two videos to complete your understanding of the range of skin damage that ultraviolet light causes to your patient's skin.